Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! You may think you've heard just about everything in this referendum campaign to date, but the debate on ITV tonight really did catch fire. Both sides tore into each other. In fact, that isn't quite true. Most of the attacks came from a very charged up Remain team, which repeatedly accused Leave of barefaced lying. Much of the heat was directed at Boris Johnson, who, it must be said, did keep his cool. There are many things to talk about tonight. Was Mr Johnson's battle with Amber Rudd a foretaste of the next Tory leadership election? What were the key claims on the EU and can they, in fact, be checked? We'll come to all that in just a moment. But first, Chris Shipp with the debate condensed once more in double quick time to five minutes. The slogan on the side of the bus is being criticised and as you're about to hear, even hotly debated in the studio tonight. But the best known face of the Leave campaign and his two debating partners arrived on that big red bus tonight. Two weeks from polling day, this is the first time such senior politicians from both sides have appeared on the same stage at the same time. And then, alternately, Team Leave and Team Remain had a moment each to outline their case. And to the prophets of doom, I say they were wrong in the past and they are wrong today. If you ask what we get if we vote to leave, they say we just don't know. Well, I say just don't know just isn't good enough. The European Union just isn't working anymore. The noble idea, dreamt up in the last century, is turning into a nightmare. But a vote to leave would cost jobs. EU is yesterday's game. Our future is to take back control and vote leave on June the 23rd. Now, tonight you're going to hear a lot of nonsense and even misinformation from the Leave campaign. Don't fall for it. And after the speeches, a pattern started to form. The Remain team, usually opponents, Tory, SNP and Labour, came together for a laser line attack on Boris Johnson. This in a question about immigration numbers. But you need to look at the numbers, although I fear the only number that Boris is in, interested in is the one that says number 10. I think Amber is uh, uh, really... We both fought on the same manifesto, which was to cut immigration to the tens of thousands. And it is impossible to do that. Boris Andrew Johnson pretending to be worried about the problems with public services when, as eight years as mayor, he left London with a huge housing shortage and he'd built hardly any houses. If we stay in the EU, there is no chance of controlling our immigration. The Remain camp have failed to answer that question. People are genuinely concerned. The <laughs> and before long, two to Tory ministers from the, the same government's energy no department so were disputing each other's claims. Your plan simply doesn't stack up. You need to level with the British public here. And while Nicola Sturgeon didn't criticise the Tory on her own team, she Nicola did criticise the Tory the government. The, the, the problem with this Tory commitment at the last election is that it was a dishonest commitment. It was dishonest then and it's dishonest now. The impact of austerity on our public services is much greater than the impact Please of immigration. You wanted to come in and so what of that bus, the one we showed you arriving at the studio, which claims the UK spends £350 million a week on the EU and could spend that on the NHS? Is what we're saying, by the way, is that if we took back control of our, our money, we'd have £10 billion more. If we left the EU, we'd have £10 billion more to spend every year on our priorities at the very least. And, and, I, and, I, and, and I may point it. out... I, may... I am staggered that Boris Johnson is standing here tonight still defending this £350 million a week figure. It's a scandal that that's still emblazoned across the campaign bus because it's an absolute whopper. May I, I respond to that? that lie off your may, bus. may I respond to that? <laughs> that's all it is, is pure fantasy, no, that we're bus. talking about cold, hard cash yes. that belongs to the people of this country that is sent Thank every you. week, okay, every I'm year, going to, to Brussels. I'm going to draw a line there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And so, to the economy, the subject we have perhaps heard more about in the campaign than any other. The EU's economy is broken. 
and we will end up having to pay for bailouts for these failing economies, whether we like it or not. Absolutely. But we can Thank take you. control. Thank you. This so nonsense true. to suggest that you, have to, Please. that you have to choose between trade and democracy. What Isla, the what, country what, what votes time? in 14 days, and we have no idea whatsoever from the Leave campaign. We would have access to the single market, which is the says important who? thing. Says and says who? That is what, that? That is what I, as I mentioned just now, You're there are 27 countries not, not in the EU that have done wait. better than us at exporting goods. 21 countries, Angela, that have done better at exporting services. And I think we're just, they're just starting to degenerate again yes. into project fear, don't you think? On the I'm, NHS, I'm very, the debate, and this debate was getting way, fierce by now, no, no, centred around no, the pressures no, 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 of immigration. We have to be clear, pressures on the NHS are occurring as a result, as in oh, other areas, of uncontrolled EU immigration. There just is no doubt about that. You need to have to control. And part of the reasons of those stresses in the long term is because we cannot control the numbers coming in. Absolutely everything is about immigration. What about all the people Sorry, who work the EU, in the how health the EU service? Help the NHS? What about all the people how who the work in the, the health service and have access to the health service who are immigrants? But Nicola Sturgeon was not always on the attack tonight. At this point, she was attacked. We need to stay in the European Union so that it can overrule a democratically elected government and then do what she wants it to do. That is absolutely outrageous. Spiky, personal and divides across parties. This debate perhaps well mirrored this campaign. Chris Ship News at 10. Well, Robert Peston, uh, of course, was watching all that very closely um, from the spin room. Robert, I'm tempted to say, what did they put on the Remain Camp's cornflakes this morning? But in all seriousness, was the sort of passion we saw tonight, was that considered tactic? Is that panic setting in? What did you make of it? Oh, it was definitely deliberate. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, they were aware that s some of the research shows that uh, voters don't think that they are putting forward their case with enough enthusiasm and we saw a lot of gusto tonight and actually strikingly also lots of personal attacks particularly on Boris Johnson accusations that he's mainly motivated not by a desire to get us out of the EU but more by a desire to get into number 10 Amber Rudd his close colleague uh, making that charge for example and that was one of the most extraordinary things about tonight something we've so rarely seen which was members of the same government at each other's throats Amber Rudd the Secretary of State for Energy attacking her colleague also in the Department of Energy Andrea Leadsom and withering about Boris Johnson saying he was the last person that she would want to be driven home by. Uh, Boris Johnson would be the last person you would want to be driven home by after a party. It doesn't get much more personal than that, does it? It certainly, it certainly does not. Uh, it was fierce and it was bitter at times. What did you make of Nicola Sturgeon, though? I mean, there's a sort of fascinating kind of cross-political currents. She defended immigration uh, very strongly. She also attacked the Tories very strongly. She did. I thought it was a uh, very slick performance. She is obviously a top-class politician. For me, the most interesting thing that her performance highlighted was the broader church of Remain. You also had Angela Eagle constantly appealing to the interests of trade unions in a very sectarian way. And then you had the Tory minister, Amber Rudd. Now, on the other side, interestingly, it was a much more coordinated approach, a much smaller perceived difference between the Labour MP there, uh, Gisela Stewart, and the two Tories, Boris Johnson and Andrea Leadsom. And I think it's very, a very interesting question whether the focus of leave, particularly concentrating on immigration, taking back control of borders, taking back control over lawmaking, is what is going to resonate more with voters against the broader Labour Tory approach of the other side, where they, they, they represent a coalition, but a coalition that sees very different things in the EU, uh, with it's all about economic growth for Amber Rudd and to a large extent it was more about workers' rights for Nicola Sturgeon um, and of course for Angela Eagle of the Labour Party. Okay Robert, thank you very much uh, indeed.
Now, throughout the campaign, we've been tracking how groups of voters across the UK are deciding which way to vote. Tonight, they have been watching the ITV debate, so what did they make of it? As families across the country tuned in for the debate, we've returned to our undecided voters to watch with them to get a sense of how your choice on the 23rd of June will be influenced or not by what you've heard. First in Leicester, there's friends Kamal, Dave and Vash. In Wickford in Essex, we're with daycare centre owner Glenda and her neighbour Neil. In Paisley in Scotland, we're talking to mum Lorna, Alan who works in finance and Holly. And in Nutsford, Cheshire, we have Charlie, his mum Kate and her dad Terry who have a family printing business. Six of the main campaigners from both sides of the EU referendum debate will go head to head. And At the start, not all the politicians the made a big impression. The other side campaigning no, for vote leave It's quite refreshing to see females. And Boris Johnson's statistics didn't meet universal control. approval. Take back control of huge sums of money, three hundred and fifty million pounds a week. And spend on our priorities, such as it's Still going on about that. I know, I know. When the topic turns to immigration, our voters sat up. This is a complex problem. There isn't a silver bullet, and I know that that's what Boris and his team would like to have. But you need to look at the numbers, although. I fear the only number that Boris is in, interested in Thank is the you. one that says number 10. <laughs> oh, I think that's really <laughs> true as well, don't you? I think so, too. <laughs> Look at his face! <laughs> <laughs> he's not used to have him and talk to him, has he? Or I don't think he's used to anyone talk to him like that, though. They're obsessed with this immigration <laughs> subject. Oh, and, you know, she? I just... I think the people are just looking at that. Yeah. And it's that's going to sway it's them. It's emotional. Yeah. It's not... It's not factual. And then Angela Eagle turned up the heat over Boris Johnson's claim we send 350 million a week to the EU. It doesn't cost 350 million pounds to be a member of the EU and you know that's not Are you saying that true that's and you've emblazoned it across your bus and you refuse to take it back. Oh, look, she's pointing your finger, look, look she's pointing your finger. <laughs> so sorry for Boris. Just, I feel sorry for him as well. I don't feel sorry for him. Especially those three Rottweilers on the other side. If you want a strong NHS, then you make sure that you control the money, that you take back those 350 million a week, which currently we do not have control over. The NHS is struggling because there's too many people in this country. We've got an older population and we've got more and more immigrants coming in. These massive numbers that they bandy around, I don't have a clue here who's saying the right thing. I just don't think that it make any difference to the NHS, whether we're in or out. Right. I wouldn't trust Boris Johnson with a health service as far as I could throw Boris Johnson. Um, Boris looks like a man that's been stutched. <laughs> but there was some sympathy for Andrea Leadsom's accusation that it's all Project Fear from the Remain side. It is the scaremongering, and it's miserable scaremongering, and people in this country will see through it. She's got a point. That, that, that point. Eh? They, they're that's scaremongering very, that, is that, is that is true. We need to know what the Leave side is going to negotiate for the benefits of us for the future. So who got the thumbs up and who blew it in the verdict of our voters? Well, I was impressed with Nicola Sturgeon again. Yeah, she, she knows how to talk. But I was also impressed with Boris Johnson. He was a cool, calm, collective character. I think obviously Nicola Sturgeon, she's always a polished performer, um, but she was good tonight. Um, and I thought that Andrea Ledinson was quite good as well. People who impressed me most were Andrea and Giza on the out campaign. Uh, I thought they were very calm, got their point across very well. I still hop from one foot to the other and I really wish that they would bring somebody to the forum who people could feel confident that they were getting the facts from. I haven't made my mind up at all. Um, it's confused me just that little bit more. I'm very much on the fence like, where I don't want to be and I'm waiting for somebody to guide me one way or the other. And I'm probably like millions of other voters in this country. It's a decision that's causing many discussions on the sofa, not to mention dividing friends and families. And soon it will be your choice with just 14 days to go. Romley Weeks, News at 10. Well, apart from checking up on the views of our groups, the other thing we've been doing during the campaign, as you've probably seen, is challenging some of the claims made by the two sides. And tonight is no different. There were... 
plenty of claims being disputed this evening. You almost certainly heard. Our national editor, Allegra Stratton, has been keeping a beady eye on what they have been saying, along with her team of experts, who you're not allowed to call geeks tonight. We'll pass over <laughs> that to earlier in the week. <laughs> yes, yes. We've all had to apologise to them. They've, you've been crunching with them. What, what did you pick out and what, what did you conclude? OK, well, we've had full fact. They're independent analysts. Call them project fact. We went through absolutely everything that was being said to, to stress test it. And the first one we're going to pull out for you is from Boris Johnson, and it's pretty famous by now. Yes, it is. It is the 300. Million. We can more see it. time talking about this. Here we go. Else. You can yeah. see it. It's the, it's the claim that we send £350 million pounds a week to the EU. It isn't true. It's £250 million, pounds mm. and, of, and that's partly because of a rebate mm. that never actually leaves the country. And of that, £80 million pounds is spent on stuff that happens in the UK, so that's agriculture and support to less well-off bits of the UK. It is still around £250 million, pounds, mm. but that is, that is not true. And he took not a, the figure on the bus, in short. not the figure okay. on the bus, uh, but that figure has not been removed. We've got two weeks to go, but there we are. <laughs> so then the next one, let's look at. This is from Remain, and this is Angela Eagle, and she said there would be a bonfire of workers' rights. That does doesn't look likely. At the moment we have a baseline of workers' rights that comes from the EU and then our government tops it up. If a future government decided to get rid of them, then that future government might be voted out for doing something incredibly unpopular. So it just doesn't look likely. Then the third one I want to turn to is, again, Boris Johnson. And this time it's about immigration and it's about a 10% growth in immigration leads to a 2% cut in wages. And he said this is from the Bank of England. Now, it is from the Bank of England and the Bank of England does back him up on that, but it is at pains to say they think it's more likely 1%. It actually might be as low as something like 0.5%. And also, it's not on the screen, but just to talk back about it, 10% yeah. rise in immigration is humongous. In 2004 mm -hmm. through to 2006, the last big spike in immigration, it was about 7%. So right. that, that is an unlikely state of affairs. And then the last one is from Remain, and that's Amber Rudd, and that is that the NHS absolutely needs EU workers. Well, it does need EU workers, but the proportion Proportions about 5% of the mm. workforce is from the EU. That's about the same proportion of EU people in the UK. So it's actually not out of proportion that the NHS needs EU workers. So some waffles so, on yeah, both yeah, sides. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> and by like the, the way, there were many more. Yeah, and we just you, had we to be kind here of all night. A bit like it. the campaign, really. Yeah. I suppose let's just let's just not to unfairly focus on Boris. But the 350 million, I mean, the UK Statistics Authority has ruled against them on that one. Is it just because they've already painted the bus that they won't change it? Use some of that money to respray it. Um, look, there was some new language used this evening that I thought was interesting. That was from Andrea Ledsom. And she, they absolutely wouldn't dodge from the figure. And, they, and she, her point she made was when you get a salary, you tell people what your salary is. You don't say, my post-tax salary is this and that. So mm. She was making that broad point. More generally, mm. they don't mind that they're getting attacked for this figure because they think, when you and I sit there and say it's actually £250 million, pounds, we're reminding the viewer that, that it's, it's a lot of money. Room, yeah. OK. Allegra, thank you uh, very much indeed. Still several weeks to go. Now, one of the features of the referendum campaign has been the unlikely political bedfellows it has created. For those who recall what they once had to say about each other, one might argue they don't come stranger than Sir John Major and Tony Blair. But today, the two former Prime Ministers put aside party differences to campaign together in Northern Ireland for the UK to remain in the EU. They do have something in common, of course. Both played a role in shepherding Northern Ireland towards peace. Today, they claimed voting to leave could jeopardise that and encourage Scottish independence too. There was no mistaking the symbolism Two old adversaries, both architects of the peace process, strolling over a bridge designed to celebrate unity in Northern Ireland and built with European money. Tony Blair and Sir John Major had come to Londonderry to spread the message for the In campaign. But what they delivered was a warning. The wrong outcome on June the 23rd will affect our union and will jeopardise that unity. Because the plain, uncomfortable truth is that the unity of the United Kingdom itself is on the ballot paper in two weeks' time. The country could tear itself apart, they warned. If the Leave campaign wins the referendum, Scotland could break away and instability here could see the peace process unravel. So I say don't take a punt on these people. Don't let them take risks with Northern Ireland's future. Don't let them undermine our United Kingdom or our relationship today with the Republic of Ireland. 
the intervention has raised eyebrows and hackles. I do find it rather disgraceful for two Prime Ministers who know full well the importance of the peace process here in Northern Ireland to come over here and suggest uh, that a vote in a particular direction is going to undermine that is quite scandalous. Just a mile or so from where the two former Prime Ministers were speaking, this is the border with the Republic of Ireland. We still don't know what form it would take if Britain does vote to leave the EU, but there were warnings today that either way it'll be bad news. If it becomes a hard frontier with checks and controls, that, it was said, would hurt trade. But if it stays open, anyone could come into the UK from Europe. The Northern Ireland Secretary insists nothing will change. That's a risk, I admit, but it's one that we can easily manage and it's not greater in extent really than risks that we already manage around our land border and have done for many years. So I asked, behind the smiles, was this project fear hitting overdrive today? Every time we point out the problems of detail with what the Leave campaign are proposing, they accuse us of scaremongering. We're not scaring people, we're warning them. And they've got to answer these questions. They can't just say to people in Northern Ireland, it doesn't matter. This visit may not have added much clarity, but it has injected heat into the campaign, as if any more of that were needed. Martin Geisler, News at 10, Londonderry. I've been getting away.